G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. If you can uh, peek a sneak, does that make sense? <laughs> it's not, sneak a peek. If you can sneak a peek off to the side of the screen, you can see I've got a bunch of stamp sets out here. So I'm actually gonna go through this um, kind of step by step. It's not necessarily a tutorial. I'm gonna be doing what I did on Instagram Live yesterday or the day after, no, the day before yesterday. Um, I don't even know what day it is right now. It's Tuesday. I'm gonna be doing what I did on Instagram Live and making ornamental elves or ornamental ladies or the Who Is She Though class from uh, Merry Mix Media, uh, 2018 or 2019, take your pick. Honestly, it's kind of the same thing, but I'm gonna be doing seven of those uh, in my Fobo Nietzsche weeks. Fun fact, I started this just about the same time last year. So this is just over a year's worth of documenting in here. And this was my step into uh, deciding whether I deserved a Hobo Nietzsche or not. It turns out um, I, it's not about deserving it, but <laughs> I, I didn't need it. I, went, I was having, having a good time in this, so I decided to keep this and to step into the real Hobonichi world, I purchased the Hobonichi five-year journal, which is almost due for a full year flip, which I'm really excited for because I love that thing. Um, but this is the Hobonichi that I decided to keep on working with. You can see I've experimented with different documenting styles all throughout the year, more illustrated styles, more ephemera and collage styles, more photos, less photos, you name it, it's been, I even did like a full, just on the computer, printed out on sticker paper kind of a style. Not my favorite, but honestly, like I wanted to try it, so why not? Um, this has been a very uh, try everything in here journal. What's that song? It's literally in my head right now. Try everything? Is that what it's called? From Zootopia, the Shakira one. <laughs> um, so this is uh, my Fobonichi weeks. Uh, the last week I kind of documented was my Art Journaling the Magic 13 retreat at Disneyland. And uh, super happy about that. I love that um, I kind of repurposed those Christmas lights from my other journal. Just uh, scanned them, printed them a little smaller and stuck them on this page. I, um, then I was able to put down all of the uh, little memories that I had. Because as it is in the other journal, should I get it? Where is it? It's here. As it is in this journal, um, it's not even finished because I didn't do anything with the, the little things up here. Um, I could document like in here possibly, maybe a couple of words about what I did on that day or what that memory is, but I just don't think, um, I don't think that would make sense because it's such a small space and I think I might want to color those in, but I'm not quite sure. Um, so in, in any case, this was all very visually stimulating for the memories, but this, I got to actually write some of them down because I'll forget, you know, I'll forget. So that's why, um, I really like that. Just repurposing that. Sorry. I'm checking if the camera's still rolling because you know, I'm not going to try and make this a, um, a 45 hour video to edit, but, um, I just kind of want to talk through it all. I'm, I'm feeling a little chatty. I've been on Instagram live a lot lately and I think we could have a good time just stamping. So the one thing I do in this journal that... Um, I think does bug a few people, but I've kept on doing it, so <laughs> sorry if you're still one of those people that it annoys, but I um, stick every second page together, um, and that's just so that it's a little more sturdy, and because a lot of the time I don't want to restrict what mediums I use, so if I've got ink that ghosts, if I've got um, Copic marker I've used in here before, like right in the beginning I was doing all this Copic marker drawing, I wanted to be able to uh, flip to the next page and not have any of that bleed through come in, so um, I stick every second page together. Uh, it just it just works that way for me. Uh, the journal itself is an A5 size, and it's the MD Paper 10th Anniversary Collection. It has a grid. I know I'm repeating myself for anyone that's heard this before, but the questions always come, so <laughs> I'm just going to get it out of the way. Um, it has a grid to about here, a faint blue grid, and then there's a margin on the side and on the bottom. I don't know if they're still selling these 10th Anniversary ones anymore, because I believe I got them last year. So it wouldn't be 10th anniversary anymore. You might be able to still pick them up, but I got a nice box set of them. There were 10 styles um, that they don't regularly do in their regularly do in their lineup. So this is one of them. I also really like the white grid. I like a lot of them. They're actually really fun. But I'm going to stamp today because that's what I did in my um, in my Instagram live. I've got my doll parts 4x6 stamp set here. This would also work with the 2x6, but I want something a little bit bigger. Um, just more substantial space to work with because I don't know how I'm going to render them all. I actually think I'll do all the coloring and kind of like 
you know, all the finishing in speed because I think that would take a really long time. But I have a few different products here that I want to try. Um, I've got, I literally got sent these in the mail. They just came yesterday. Um, thank you, Zandra. Um, I'm going to leave this card here just so you can check it out. <laughs> but these are handmade um, with artist grade German pigments. These are handmade watercolors. So I don't even know what color these are, but I'm going to pull those out. I want to give those a go. I have a rose gold that Zandra made and it's actually really, really beautiful. And it's in my, um, I think it's in my regular tin right now. It's over there. Um, but anyway, so this, I'll leave you there just if you want to have a look at that. And I also got these from Joan Waits. It's a beautiful like set of um, what she described as a hybrid watercolor and gouache by Mission Mijello, which I've never used any Mission products before. And I did search on YouTube for a um, kind of a, a how-to with these paints because Joan actually put down that um, oh look, and Joan illustrates children's books as well. She gave this to me to give to my um, to my nephew, so I'll have to give that to Lijie Lulu. Um, but yeah, this it, she said to use it with a white gouache, um, and that would make it the gouache, or you could just use it regular, and that would be the watercolor. So um, I, I'm not quite sure what the differences are. I watched one video on YouTube, uh, and by a person called In Liquid Color. And um, so if you want to go and check that out, that's I, I believe that's what these are. I don't know exactly if they're that, but um, I think that's what they are because it was the only thing I could kind of find. The rest is all in Korean, so um, it wouldn't be much information I could decipher from that. But um, I'm going to give these a go today because I'm super curious, even just to use them as the watercolor, but I have this uh, teaser gouache white here from my box set so I could just use this and play around with that as well but she also gave it to me in this beautiful little tin so thank you so much for that Joan and thank you Zandra. Mermaid Lagoon, Z's Mermaid Lagoon that's so cute that looks really really staining so I'm gonna have to be careful with that one I've handled a pigment like that before that actually stained everything I owned <laughs> oh rose gold is this the same rose gold my, I'm asking as if Xandra's watching. <laughs> um, I hope it is, because I actually really love that rose gold and I've been going through it. In any case, it's probably going to be a beautiful rose gold. So I'm going to put these uh, over here. I'll also put the mission paints over there. Let's get to stamping. I've got to skip one page uh, so I can put those together. Now, I want seven of these ornaments stamped out because I'm going to do um, daily documenting in the week leading up to Christmas. I've got a lot of stamp sets here. I've actually decided to pull out almost every stamp set I've ever made with all the faces and things that I could use because I want to just go nuts with it. So let's start with, should start with one that I like rarely use anymore because I'm always, I'm always using this face and I don't know why, but I think I should start with something different. I loved these. These were the first ones I did. These were the unbothered stamps. I think I'm just going to ink up her face. Should put it on a block. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to ink up her face and stamp that. I've got Tim Holtz Distress Ink in Antique Linen. It might be a bit hard for you to see, but I really don't want it to be stamped out too bold. So I'm going to put that just over here. I kind of want it higher on the page because I'm going to build the ornament coming down. And then I've got my doll parts body, which I'm just going to slightly angle. And I've got the hips, but I'm going to wipe off that part just so that I have the top of the waist and the hips. Oh, I ghost stamped that body again. <laughs> Maybe I should have these on different blocks because I don't want that to happen. I've got another block around here. Some of the blocks I have, my acrylic blocks, I have little parts of the other doll parts that I have so that they're all ready to go. I don't have to keep pulling them out. There's literally like a few blocks around here that has a whole little doll like built into it on the block. So I just have to stamp them all out quickly. But that's only because I have a ton of these extra blocks when I do classes. I don't typically work like that. Like I wouldn't buy extra blocks for that. Um, well, that's kind of as much. Should I stamp the arms in? I don't know. Do you guys want arms? I could. I might do some quick little shoulders and art because I don't know if I want the arms going crazy everywhere. So I'm going to do the shoulder joint. I've got the upper arm here. I'm going to put all of these on here. I know I just moved this body because I didn't want to go stamp, but I'm going to do it anyway. I think I'm just going to have the upper arm stamped on, mm, but then I might need the I don't know. Now I need the elbow. I think I might have to do the lower arm as well, but I kind of want the lower arm to disappear. So I'm not going to be too crazy about it. 
and there is the lower arm, this long stick one. I'll just use this block. I could only, I could just do the top part of it as well. I don't need to do the whole thing. Because I'm going to draw all over that, paint all over that anyway. So that's that. Should I use this as my ornament? No, it's a bit big. I should use a washi tape? How big is that? Maybe it's too small. Oh, I'm playing Goldilocks with my shape now. <laughs> Which size is just right? I should get that. Where's that stupid little thing I had? I used to use a little stencil for my circles all the time. I don't know where it is anymore. I do know where it is actually. It's down below me, but it's propping up. <laughs> it's in a case that's propping up my light, so I don't want to use that. Perhaps I'll use the inside of this. Let's just go for that. Why not? And I'm going to use, I think this little red pencil. A lot of what I'm going to be doing is red and green and gold and classic Christmas colors, I think. So I think that'll be fine. Should I just leave it like that? Or should I put some of those little extra ornament details on? I don't know. I'm second guessing myself and I really shouldn't. I never do this. <laughs> I'm usually quite decisive and just go for it. I think it's because I'm, I know I'm recording live. Well, not live, but I know I'm just going to be uploading this with some background music. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to get my brain going. If you are following along, I hope it's making sense. Let's grab another face. Um, oh, I've got the bloke here. Should I just do the whole bloke body? Cause I don't think he's going to look great with this little waist. <laughs> I mean, he could. We could do it if we wanted to. I think I might just do one of these bloke ornaments. Just ink him up to about his waist. Well, I could just attach the ornament there. Oh, but he's going to be looking to the other side. You know what? I'm going to skip these two pages. And I'm going to have him looking off to the side here. That way, whoever's on the other page, he'll be looking at. There we go. I'm not doing a great job stamping. It's because this book is um, it's all bulky now, so you don't really get a clean contact with the stamp the whole the whole way down. The whole way down, does that make sense? You don't get a clean contact with the stamp, it's not very flat. So it's okay, I'm gonna draw over it anyway, but if you were stamping it out properly, you might wanna put something flat underneath these pages. So she, well, he needs a an ornament. Maybe I can use the washi tape for him. He's a little smaller. Let's go this size. Just tracing around the washi tape. And then, oh, I'd go the inside of the washi tape underneath that. And then a point. These ornament shapes, as long as they attach to their hips, they can be kind of anything. It could be snowflakes or even an ornament that you do have, I think I've suggested that before, like an actual ornament from your Christmas tree might be really fun. Then you'll be able to tie it in and make it a lot more personal. But for me, this is just decoration on the page since I want to be doing seven days of documenting. Oh, sorry, my ramen is repeating on me. <laughs> I want to do seven days of documenting, so I just want an ornament on each page. But I do want them to be kind of different, so we should just get a little bit more bold with the next one. Let's go for full on face fantasy. I said face, not space. Just for those of you who are trying to catch me out and tell me that I love space now because they did some baby Yodas. <laughs> I know who you are. <laughs> no, it's fun. I know it's weird. I know I go on about hating space and then I just went on a Space star, space stars, <laughs> Star Wars kick, but it was the Disney. Th it was being in Disneyland that got me. It wasn't space. It wasn't living for the space. All right, I'm gonna use my concept stamp face because she is huge, Kim. There we go. See how that's flat? Like this part of the book is flat, so I'm getting an even contact with all the stamping. I don't know if you can see. It's probably too light for you to see, but it did work. Um, let's do the same little body from doll parts. Spoke too soon, I guess. <laughs> Maybe I didn't ink it up properly. Guys, I'm a really amateur stamper. All these years later, it's not going to get better. Oh, I'm going to wipe that off. There we go. Now, what shape does she want? I, th I like circular, I'm not going to lie. I do like the circular shapes, but she might want one of these little ones as well. 
Or if it was like this and I put two little dots over here, I'm going to connect it with little curves and then do a U curve underneath, like a big smile, and she can be a bell. Bell. And I'll put the little... What's this part of the bell called? I was going to call it the charm or the ringer. I don't know what it's called. There must be a term for that. All my bell enthusiasts out there. <laughs> Do you know what that's called? <laughs> this little thing? Let's put her arms on. Oh, do you know what? I have that old, um... I have this one as well from the... This one. She could... She could just go straight into an ornament. I should use that one too. I haven't used that one in years. That's the thing when you're designing your own stuff. You spend so much time with it. I think I even said this on the live before. You spend so much time with it. Um, in designing it and getting it all right that by the time you get it you then play with it and you get excited for it And then you have to do all the examples for it to show everyone how it works or how people could use it and just kind of provide a bit of that um, You know a bit of that learning curve if you need to teach how to use it a bit. Oh, this is not gonna My blocks too big for this arm. It's fine. Let's pretend <laughs> oh, I didn't put her hands on I'm not gonna worry about hands. Yeah, no, I should. I should worry about hands. I've got these hands. I'll put them. That's. I might just leave them here actually. Because this is the. These are the two by six hands. So I'll put the two by six and the four by six hands on the same side. And that'll work. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, you spend so much time with all of the products that by the time you go to. Um, use them for fun, you've kind of exhausted them. <laughs> and it's not like you don't like them anymore, but you're, you're just really excited to get onto the next thing. And if you are designing something new, you're pretty much just, you know, onto the next thing. Um, so, and because these are my first stamp sets, I had done a ton with these by the time anyone had actually seen them. So when everyone was seeing them, I thought, okay, great. I don't have to um, stick with these anymore. I'm gonna move on to the next thing that I was thinking about. Forgetting that people are only just starting to see it and using it now, so you should probably save all your excitement for them. <laughs> so over the years I've learned to kind of curb all of my play and experimentation more towards the release of a certain product, just so I don't go for the overkill. Um, but it's been a couple of years since I released that, so you really do end up not using it as often as you think after the first, you know, well, after some, when something else comes, I think when something else comes, you kind of replace your excitement with that, which is normal, but then you forget how much you loved what you had from the beginning. So I'm kind of excited. I'm a little, feeling a little nostalgic to bring this one back out. This is our fourth ornament. I'm just going to ink the whole thing up, but because she hasn't got the top part of her head, um, she's from the face base stamp set. I put her like that because I, um, the face base is all about finishing the illustration. Because she hasn't got the top part of her head, I think I'm going to stamp her half off the page at the top. That way, I really don't have to worry about anything going on up there. I don't have to draw it. But she might want a massive ornament. And I like to fill up this column space anyway because I don't like... You can see, kind of, you can see the grid underneath. But I don't love to write in this space because I like writing on the lines. I have a serial killer slant when I don't have ruled paper or grid paper. So I'm happy to fill this negative space over here. And then I'll just imply that she's got some more of that ornament at the bottom. It's not going to be much, but it'll be there. I'm just going to attach it like that. That looks good. One, two, three, four. Oh, I need three more. This was also a part of, um, this was actually my first samples that I got from the manufacturer. So this was a test. These I actually never made stamps. Well, she became a stamp in the um, Charmed, I'm sure. I actually really love her. I think I'm gonna use her. Um, she became a stamp, but these two did not. Oh, here she is here. This is the set that she ended up in. Um, with the eye. This face might be fun to use as well because I haven't used that in a while and I like that one. So one, two, I need one more face. I've got blokes, I've got... You know what, I'm gonna use this one because she is my favorite at the moment. I don't know why. <laughs> Let's get rid of her. Now I don't know how I'm gonna connect her. I think I wanna erase, not erase, but I think I'm gonna wipe off the part of her neck 
that leads down here. Hopefully her hair will be left. I haven't wiped off too much of that ink. But I'm going to put her over here. Just hopefully that attached. Oh yeah, there. So she's still got her hair, but she's got her face. But she hasn't got that neck because I'm going to replace that neck with the body, which is gone. How many blocks have I got flying around here that I can't find it? Here it is. I'm going to put the doll parts body on her. Give her a new life. Some of the proportions aren't going to match, obviously, but that can be super quirky as well. And I really like the shape of this ornament, so I might want to do another one, but perhaps she'll just be the whole teardrop. She won't be. She doesn't need that bauble on top. It's like a mermaid without the actual fin. That would be cute. Leave her like oh, she needs arms as well. I'm not living for the arms, I'll be honest. I don't know. Why. <laughs> I don't know why I don't want the arms today, but I think it might do a better job finishing. Like I might regret it if I don't put the arms on. But I think I'm just gonna have these arms angled down and they'll just disappear behind her body. So I think I can just leave it like that. Got my outline. I need this one. But this is an old school face as well. This is, no it wasn't. This was a tutorial. I remember the tutorial. I thought it was a part of the Doodle Squad, that digi stamp that I put up years ago. That was like one of the first digi stamp things I did as I was getting my Etsy store transitioned away from all the crazy stuff I was trying to make happen on Etsy in the beginning and moving into um, digital stamps before I decided to actually make my own products. Um, but yeah, this this was one of those tutorials where we we're just going over the same basic face structure. I think it was even on Instagram. I think the, there was like a step-by-step -step on Instagram for this. I always liked it. It's a little weird, but I always liked the look of it. I have to say though, that stamp set, the um, Charmed I'm Sure, I wanted to do a stamp set that was kind of themed, but I couldn't pick a theme because I was just so scatterbrained. And I liked all the individual pieces, but I never thought it was very cohesive. Like, um, I chose this because I thought it was cool, but I never really used it. I loved this, but it was so specific. This eye, I probably should have done the opposite of the eye and had both of them in there. Um, in hindsight. Um, and this I really loved, it was based off an illustration and I always loved the illustration more than the stamp, but I did like the stamp too. I don't know, it was just, this was a, a really random wild card for a stamp set that I put together. But I think there was, uh, I think I had to try it to know that if I ever themed something again, it had to make sense. There had to be a, a purpose for all of the things being in there and the purpose couldn't be just because I liked some of them <laughs> or just because I thought they were interesting. Like there had to be a good practical use for it, I think. So, I don't know. We'll keep our eyes peeled for 2020, I think. <laughs> That's that. And now I have one more, one more, which I might do here because like I said, I'm gonna try and fill that negative space that I don't wanna write in. Journal decisions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like I've uh, I've done a really good job. If I've remembered something about uh, my experience before and I've corrected my mistake before I make it again, I get like this weird sense of pleasure out of it. <laughs> Maybe pleasure is the wrong word, but I, I feel like oh good, good for me. I've noticed something and I've corrected my I've corrected myself. Um, but you can't tell anybody because it's such a weird thing to say. Like oh I. I corrected my journal problem before I had it. It's like, is there ever really a journal problem? How crazy are we that we would consider anything a problem <laughs> in our journals? It feels like that sometimes. Sometimes it just be like that. This one? I want this one? This one? Yeah, maybe she can have this one. We'll go subtle. There we go, one. We'll give her like an oval and then a teardrop. I like that. And one more set of arms. I should just maybe have never done the arms from the beginning. So I just really can't be bothered with the arms today. Maybe I'll like it once it's finished. I'll be grateful that I did it, but I'll tell you what, right now, couldn't think of anything worse than having to deal with all these arms. It's something that's so weird because I think before, like when I was drawing as a teenager or a kid, like there, there would be no way on the planet that I would just leave out arms or just not draw a part of the anatomy. But now 
I can leave out a whole bunch of stuff and not even care about it. <laughs> it's made me a lot happier to do it. I've, I don't think I've felt much pressure in the past couple of years um, with illustrating or having fun than I've, you know, I used to feel. Obviously, sometimes you've got to get it right, but for the most part, I actually find it a lot more freeing, which I think makes sense. Um, that is that. The next thing I think I want to do is outline them, possibly. Just so I can see them better. But because I want to use a mixture of different mediums, I'm not quite sure if that's a good idea. Or should I? I should just draw them. I think I'm just going to draw them. I'm going to draw them as if they were just illustrations, and then I'm going to colour them in, however I colour them in. So, um, I'm going to put that part in speed, because I think we've kind of... Uh, talked for a long time. I don't know. I'm gonna check how many minutes have we been on so far. Oh half an hour good for us <laughs> um, We've been on for half an hour, so I'm gonna put the rest of this into speed Hopefully you enjoy seeing it come together. I believe I'm just gonna outline everything Draw everything and then just color in I may not color all of them in maybe I'll save um, the coloring for each day that I do the journaling, but as it is, I have um, Monday's journaling to do in here and Tuesday's journaling to do in here, so I think I'll do that for you on camera as well, just to show you how that comes together, and I'll be using these date, they're not date stamps, but they're a date stamp to me <laughs> for today. Um, these are Ali Brown's Essential Alpha, I also use these in the Instagram Live. Um, I might do a bit of extra stamping, because I, I pulled these out as well. These are Inky Quill. Um, these are Adele's designs for the creator box. The stamps in here that I used for the last um, Instagram live that I did with this particular wannabe tutorial that I'm showing today. I used this because it looked like um, the twigs and berries and I used this which ended up making the whole thing look like a cheerleader for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> these look like her pom-poms and we use these as wings. There's a photo on Instagram if you want to check out how it turned out. Um, and that's what this whole video is kind of stemming from. Um, but I might use these to decorate. I don't know if I'll decorate the page with them or if I'll decorate the characters with them. Um, but I, I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned that these were also the ones that I used in that video on Instagram Live. Just in case you're curious. Um, these I know you can only get in the creator box and these um, I'm pretty sure are still on Ali's Etsy store. So, yeah, go check that out. So, uh, check it out if you want. If you're still looking for something for Christmas, which at this point you would be way too late for. <laughs> uh, but maybe you're looking to treat yourself after Christmas because you had a particularly stressful Christmas. I've also got these. I think at the very least I'll be testing these out on these two um, today with my little white gouache. And I'll be putting possibly some rose gold accents on. I really want to figure out what color this is. Um, anyway. Thanks for watching. I hope you had a good time. Um, enjoy the rest of the video as this all comes together and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Last year I thought about how things can come around just like that if everyone is here to celebrate one day. We have our
time the snow is falling down and it is cold outside we gather around the fireplace and no one cares about yesterday